Hi, this is Robert Garrison, and welcome back to another one of my saltwater aquarium videos. Today's topic is going to be saltwater aquarium plumbing and the use of a CPR overflow and a DIY sump. And I'm also going to touch bases on some of the things that I have done to help prevent any issues for having a sump, such as water leaking or overflowing due to power failure. So as you can see here I have the CPR continuous siphon overflow that is taking water out of my display tank my 20 gallon down to my 5 gallon sump. Now yes I do have a small sump and a lot of the forums that I've been reading, you know, people suggested doing five gallon sums, and a lot of them get talked out of it. I went ahead and did it. And the reason why is because, well, that added about three and a half gallons of water to my system. You know, I only have 15 gallons of water in this 10 gallon or 20 gallon tank um, because of all the equipment. So adding some more brings up my water volume so that helps as well as I wanted a refugium for nutrient export and I did not want to go with a hand on the back refugium um, and uh, I wanted to try my hand at a sump so the first route that I did is I did try doing a DIY overflow and as I talked about in my other videos is I couldn't get it to pass the power failure test. Now the power failure test is, is when you kill the power to it or if the power gets shut off say during a lightning storm or um, your power company is doing tests or has to bring the power down for some reason you have no power in your aquarium or your home that the water isn't going to overflow into your, into your sump and overflow onto your carpet or you're not going to have water uh, raise in your tank and overflow in your tank uh, when it comes back on because your overflow didn't kick back on so those are the two main concerns that I have found when it comes to adding a sump and a lot of the people that I've talked to when they have just are talking about I want to add a sump, I want to add a refug in below my tank but I really don't want to have the issue of water on the overflowing out so I'm going to touch a little basis on that to try to calm your worries on that so I have the CPR continuous siphon overflow how this overflow box is rated to 1500 gallons an hour obviously for my 20 gallon nano I am not going to be doing 1500 gallons an hour through it with my little Rio 600 I'm doing about maybe a hundred to two hundred gallons an hour um, I'm definitely not doing more than 200 I'm guessing probably around that range I don't know a hundred percent for sure um, but it's somewhere between a hundred and two hundred gallons an hour so uh, with that um, yes I did get a big overflow box for it why? Well, this cost me 50 bucks used with a brand new Aqualifter. One for my tank would cost over 100 bucks. Brand new. $50 or over 100 bucks. You do the math. You know, as most people want to do, they want to save as much money as they can and have the most beautiful tank that they can get. I'm no different so I went with this big one plus it gives me the option for when I do upgrade my tank because I hope to upgrade my tank to a larger tank um, so I can house some more diverse um, types of fish in my tank of course more corals and more room for my giant anemone um, this can go with it so the key component to the CPR continuous siphon overflow is the aqua lifter. Now the aqua lifter sucks air out of your siphon chamber and uh, you can see it's the black section there and uh, 
starts your siphon to overflow into your back to your drain lines. Now, when your power shuts off, your siphon will break. Okay, so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, it continuously siphoning. It's only going to siphon up to this level of your tank. And then once it does, your siphon's going to break. And then it's going to empty the water that's in the back. So make sure that you have enough room in your sump that will allow for that little bit of extra water. Now when my power kicks off, the water that's in my return line and the water that's in the overflow only comes up to about right here. So I got several inches of space so I don't have to worry about if power fails water overflowing. Okay. Now when the water comes when the sorry when the power comes back on your aqua lifter will start sucking the air out of your chamber and then start your siphon back up. Now that is probably the best safety feature there. It's going to start your siphon for you. You don't have to worry about it. So if you're not at home, you're at work, you're on vacation, the power comes off, turns back on, this guy is going to get you going again and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, now there's one other section of the safety that I will talk about here in just a minute. Now, like I said, this is up to 1,500 gallons. It is the tool, the dual inlet, sorry, not inlet, but outlet. And um, I've used the stock hoses. You can hard plumb this. And if you're worried about it leaking, you can even put silicone right around here. Um, that way you don't have to worry about leaks. Um, it seals up pretty good. And then it comes down here to my sump. And uh, my sump is a five gallon. Um, and the kit was about 30 bucks from Walmart. And it come with this little hood here that has three little LEDs which light up my refugia. Um, my first chamber I have bio balls now. <laughs> know a lot of you don't like bio balls. And for my other videos, you know that I don't mind bio balls. I have a bio cube that I've kept stock and I've been running that bio cube for about five and a half to six years now with the bio balls. Here's the trick about your bio balls. Just like anything else in the aquarium, uh, do your maintenance. Take out about 10 or 15 percent of your bio balls each week. Swish them around in your dirty water to get any of the large deposits that have accumulated in your bio balls, put them back. Do not do all your bio balls at once. That'll cause your tank to recycle. Now, when I installed the bio balls into here, as you can see, I got a little cycling going on. I got some algae growth. That's not going to last that long. Just keep up with your maintenance, clean your tank, and uh, Eventually it'll all go away, just monitor your nitrates, do your water changes, and uh, eventually the, all the beneficial bacteria will start accumulating and growing on your bio balls, and you'll have that extra biological filtration for your tank. Now the main reason I wanted to do that is because I got the live rocks that I want in my tank, I got live sand, now I got bio balls, and I got live rock in my refugium. So I got a lot of surface area for biological filtration, so that allowed me to um, have a little bit more stocking in my tank. Now I do have my three clowns, and then I added a regal damsel, and uh, he likes to hide a lot, but that's that guy right there, thinking about calling him Turbo, um, waiting for my kids to come up with a name, since they like to name my fish. So... Um, it allows me to keep a little bit more in there with uh, having more biological filtration. Um, and then I have my bubble trap. Now, is the bubble trap necessary in a flow in this tank? No, it is not. But if I decide to upgrade my pump and go for a higher flow, I could possibly start getting some micro bubbles in there. That will help take care of them. So I'm going to leave it this way. My next chamber here is my refugium where I have gone bare bottom. 
just have my Chiado, my Live Rock Rebel, and my heater. Now, if you go on forums, YouTube, there's a lot of people that talk about Miracle Mud, Live Sand, or a Bare Bottom Refugium. Now, I decided to go the Bare Bottom Refugium because I heard and then I read that with Live Sand or even Miracle Mud, it could become a dangerous trap. I don't want that. Plus, it's going to be easier to clean. So, I am trying the bare bottom method. And then I have my return line with my Rio 600 pump. Um, you can hear the pump. Hope you can hear it here on the video. Um, it's not the quietest pump, but I don't have a very loud system anyways here with my whole tank system. So that little bit of noise is nothing to worry about and I don't even have a loud trickling for my overflow so I have my return line which I have used clear tubing um, a lot of people like to not use clear tubing because um, the light can cause algae to grow in your tubing this is going to be upgraded um, don't know when sometime soon hopefully I will have a better return line um, and then it goes into my tank. Now here's the other fail safe for plumbing. See the water coming out of the tube right there? I drilled a hole just above the water line and what this is going to allow is the water when you have a power failure that's going to break your siphon in your return line so only the water in the tubing is going to siphon back into your aquarium no additional water from your tank is going to siphon into there as long as you drill this hole. So if you plan on doing this, please, for the sake of your carpet and for your own sanity, drill this hole. Alright, so that's your two precautions. One, your siphon breaks in there in your overflow when the power shuts off and that breaks the siphon so you don't have a whole lot of water like I said it only goes up to about right here when my power shuts off and then when your power comes back on your aqua lifter your pump in your sump all will turn back on and get your system going it's pretty fail safe so if you have any worries about this or want to more of an explanation on how I plumb this up or the fail safes don't be afraid to comment my video or if you have any comments just on my saltwater aquariums my sump the overflow or even how the fluval sea protein skimmer is doing as I did in my, a review of that in my last video uh, please message me below in the comment section or you can find me on Facebook at Robert's Aquarium page Again, thank you for watching, and I hope that this helps some of you, and uh, happy reefing.